Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel and welcome to those of you worshiping with us online. I am so glad that you are here today. I'm Indy Gokenauer, the pastor here, and I'm ready to worship with you this morning. I just want to draw your attention to your green announcement sheet. There's a lot coming up. It seems like over the summer things are kind of quiet, and then all at once we pick back up. Um, we're picking back up here uh, for the fall. So lots of stuff coming up. A couple of things I want to note. We will be doing a backpack blessing uh, next Sunday at both of our services here and at 1045. Um, for all of our students from little to college, if you're going back to school, we want to pray over you. Um, for teachers, for all of that work uh, in and with the schools, we want to pray God's blessing upon you for the school year. So make sure you're here with us next week. Bring your backpack. Uh, if you don't have a backpack, that's okay. Uh, we'll still pray over you. So I'm excited to, to be able to do that again this year. We will be starting to collect candy, believe it or not, for Trunk or Treat. Uh, we'll start that next Sunday. There will be um, a container out in the lobby for you to place your candy in. Uh, we ask that you uh, bring in candy that's been wrapped, so nothing loose like candy corn, that kind of stuff. Um, it's much easier to hand out when it's already prepackaged. So thank you for your support. We will have a sign-up sheet to decorate trunks in the coming weeks, uh, but we will start collecting candy next week. We are uh, now selling Emmanuel t-shirts uh, and long sleeve shirts. So there is a sign up sheet on the welcome desk. Um, there's information on Facebook, right on our Facebook page uh, to tell you about all of the information you'll need to know. Um, there are two different colors uh, for the t-shirts, two different colors for long sleeve shirts, and then we have uh, a shirt for kids as well. Um, we've got lots of outreach events coming up here in the fall. Um, we have our community closet going on. Uh, and so it's a great way to identify who we are um, and where we're from. So I encourage you, if you are volunteering in any capacity this fall or you're thinking about it, um, our indoor yard sale, all of that, um, consider purchasing a shirt that will support the church. We will be having a children's ministry picnic on September the 11th uh, following our second worship service. So get that on your calendar if you have um, children um, ages 3 to 5th grade. Um, and you can contact Carol Armstrong if you have any questions about that. And this is not in your bulletin, um, but this is on our Facebook page and went out an email this week. Um, our church is now set up with an Amazon Smile account. So if you shop Amazon um, ever or you'd like to, uh, you can now support the church through your shopping. Um, if you go to either of those places, our website, um, check your email or our Facebook page. Uh, it, the link is in there, so you just follow the link um, and order from that link, and then your purchases will support the church. Um, so that is new this week. Ken, do we have a movie trailer? Okay, we have a movie coming up on August the 27th um, here in our church fellowship hall. And I think that's all of my announcements for this morning. Please do read your green insert um, to be up to date on all that is happening here at Emmanuel. Would you join me for a moment of prayer? Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the space that we have to come and to worship you together, and for all of those who have gathered all around who are watching online. And we are grateful for this time, for this space, for this opportunity. So may our worship be pleasing and acceptable to you today. In your name we pray. Amen. As you're comfortably able, would you please stand and join in the call to worship? Sing praise to God who has come to our aid. Who answers when we call and leads us to hope. You have turned our mourning into dancing. You have clothed us that we might sing praises to you and not be silent. O Lord our God, we will give you thanks forever. As we remain standing, let's join our voices and worship God in song. Pilgrim Church. 
go to God together in prayer. O oh God, you come to us not in the chaos of the whirlwind, not in the roar of the earthquake, not in the crackling heat of the fire, but in the sound of sheer silence. Quiet our minds, bring peace to our hearts and stillness to our bodies that we might meet you in that silence. Help us to listen for your still, small voice. Give us the courage to go wherever you lead us, trusting that you will prepare the way. We pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our scripture today comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 14. There he came to a cave where he spent the night. But the Lord said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. And from Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 through 19, then he asked them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, You are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this is our fifth week in our sermon series on courage. 
We've been using Tom Berlin's book called Courage, Jesus and the Call to Brave Faith to help us navigate through this series. We live in a world that does not make it easy to follow Jesus. In order for us to be faithful in our commitment to following Jesus, we must have courage. The first week we talked about knowing our purpose and how that gives us courage to pursue our faith unashamedly. Then we talked about the things that convict us and how that gives us courage because our convictions fuel our choices and help us to have courage as we proclaim our faith. Then we talked about our words and actions and how we can have courage through what we say and do. Last week we talked about how hope fuels our courage and gives us strength for the long journey ahead. Having hope in Jesus sustains us when life gets hard. Today we are focusing on the courage to keep going. Let's pray. God, may we be open to the movement of your spirit here today. May we be faithfully listening that we might faithfully respond. In your name we pray. Amen. When I was in seminary, a group of my college friends and I decided that we wanted to run the DC Nike Women's Half Marathon. Now, I have never run a half marathon before, nor had any of my friends. I had maybe run a handful of 5Ks, but that was about it. Months before the race, I started training. Now, I have never been a runner, but for some reason, I always wanted to be. Like, it sounds cool, uh, but it's a lot of work, right? If you've ever tried running, it is a lot of work. So I would run small clips here and there, getting ready for the big day. My friends and I started out together on race day, but we quickly split up because we all run at different paces. So there I was running 13.1 miles all by myself. The crowds were cheering and made it exciting. The first six miles weren't too bad. You laugh, there's so much adrenaline, you just, it pushes you along. But then mile seven hit. The crowds had disappeared and it felt like I was the only one running in the middle of Washington, DC. I kept inching what felt like inching along, not covering much ground, ready to call it quits. I did not want to keep going. What was the point? Whose idea was this? I kept asking myself that question until I hit mile 11. And then I started telling myself that I had to finish now. I had come this far, two more, 2.1 more miles to go. I kept pushing because I had to cross that finish line. Tom Berlin describes fortitude as courage that has the potency to endure, especially in times of adversity. Fortitude kept me moving. It gave me the courage to keep going even when I didn't want to go any further. We need fortitude in life. And we need fortitude fueled by our hope in Christ to give us courage for the journey ahead. Elijah needed a little fortitude. We find Elijah in the passage that we heard from 1 Kings 19 this morning discouraged, overwhelmed, and ready to quit. It took a lot of courage to be Elijah, I imagine. An incredible prophet with truly inspiring faith. Before this passage from 1 Kings 19, Elijah, in chapter 18, Elijah challenges the prophets of Baal to a contest. Whoever's God proved himself that day would be the God of Israel. The prophets of Baal danced and prayed and couldn't get their gods to set the sacrifice that they had prepared on fire. Elijah, courageously and confidently, mocks their efforts, for he knew that their gods could not set the sacrifice on fire. Their gods could not provide like his God could. Elijah, in his courage and confidence, had the people pour water three times all over the wood that he would use for his sacrifice. 
And as he called upon the name of the Lord, fire came down and set the sacrifice on fire. The courage that it takes to verbalize this kind of faith is astounding. Imagine having that kind of faith, trusting that God will show up and provide every time. Trusting that God will prove himself. That is some serious courage. But it's exhausting to be courageous all by yourself. It's exhausting to forever sustain courage without support, rest, and renewal. It's especially exhausting when we start relying on our own strength to have courage. And then we come to the cave where Elijah finds himself for the night. And God wants to know what on earth Elijah is doing hiding out. And when God asks what Elijah is doing there, Elijah, in my mind, how I hear the scriptures, exasperatingly tells God that he has faithfully and passionately served him. But that hasn't gotten him or any others very far. Because the other prophets had been killed, and they were coming for Elijah next. And so God tells Elijah to leave the cave and to go stand on the mountain. And so he did. And Elijah waited for God to speak. See, God was still speaking to Elijah. God still had a plan that Elijah could not see. And Elijah definitely couldn't hear God because he was too distracted by the worries to listen. So God used some creative ways to capture Elijah's attention. God didn't speak in those attention-grabbing moments. He first needed Elijah to pay attention. And then God was able to speak. We want things done in our own time, and we want to be in control, like Elijah. We want God to speak to us now in a way that we clearly understand. We want God to lay out the plan for our lives all at once so that we can see how it's all going to unfold. Wouldn't that be easier? Then we would have no doubts, no questions what our purpose is. I think that Elijah would agree with that. Mix distraction and impatience together and you get us. Trying to figure out our God purpose, but too distracted to listen to what God is trying to say to us. We can only sustain courage on our own for so long. Elijah got to his breaking point. I understand just a little bit of how Elijah felt. Not, of course, to the full extent, but I've experienced a glimpse of that, and I'm guessing that you have too. See, none of us were expecting life to drastically change in March of 2020. Things were going really well. The church was growing. God was on the move, and then everything shut down. The church, the community, even the world. For the next two years, we would fight every step of the way to keep the church going, to creatively engage the church and the community, to continue our outreach efforts, but to do it safely. Day after day, week after week, we have been working and working and working to keep things going. And now we're feeling the weight of it. We know that there is a mission to continue, a vision to seek, people to reach out, and yet we are tired. We're starting to feel defeated. The negative thoughts are settling in. It feels like we're losing the battle. I'm feeling that with you, church. Those feelings are real and overwhelming and they can be paralyzing at times. This week on my desk, which you can see if you go into my office, I wrote a note to myself that reads, 
not today, Satan. Because I get tired too. And this week especially, I was starting to feel defeated in my efforts to faithfully follow Jesus and to be a faithful leader. And while I was praying at my desk, God reminded me that he is for me. And that Satan is trying to seep into my thoughts, trying to distract me from keeping my eyes on Jesus. So in the stillness of a quiet prayer, God spoke. It takes courage to keep pushing forward, church. I know that the journey is tiring. I know it feels defeating that life is not what it used to be. That the pews aren't full and ministry is different. I feel it too. I am with you. But you know what I also know? God is not finished with us yet. God has not stopped moving since March of 2020. God has been doing new things, good things in us, in our community, and in the world. God has always been faithful. God has never quit on God's people. And we can't lose sight of that, especially when we are feeling tired. We have to keep going. It takes courage to do that. But not courage that we sustain all on our own. This kind of courage has to be rooted in Christ. It's where our faith begins and how it grows by staying rooted in Christ. The passage that we heard from Matthew this morning is a conversation that the disciples and Jesus were having. Peter answers Jesus' question by proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And then Jesus tells Peter that it is upon him that he will build his church. Peter was all in for Jesus. He was bold and courageous, and yes, he made some mistakes sometimes. Tom Berlin describes Peter as wholehearted. And he says that Peter is wholehearted in his conviction about Jesus' identity and power, and his courage emanates from it. This is not a conviction that you half-heartedly believe and live your life for. Because you either are the son of God or you aren't. There really isn't anything in between. Peter believed wholeheartedly that Jesus was the Messiah and he wholeheartedly followed after that conviction. It's what gave him the courage to keep going. We have to have the courage to keep going, church. Elijah kept going. He didn't quit on that mountain. Peter kept going. We can keep going. We have to if we want to remain faithful to the mission of Jesus. Writing that note on my desk this week has given me the courage to keep going to get a little rest and to let God's truth wash over me. We have to keep going because people around us need to hear about the hope that we have in Jesus. Now, I didn't run out this week and do a million things. What I did was change my attitude and perspective and chose to see my day, my life, and my ministry as a way to courageously live out my faith. My faith in the living God who has not failed us nor abandoned us. This fortitude will help me in the coming days and weeks ahead. As a church, we are pushing forward together with courage. We're prayerfully together searching for a new youth director, praying for our outreach events this fall with Pumpkin Fest and Trunk or Treat. We're supporting our community through various mission efforts, including our partnership with New Hope. We're prepping for our first confirmation class in many years. We're getting ready to launch our next round of discipleship classes. We keep going because we believe that God's vision for our church is to grow and build relationships with our community in order to meet needs, proclaim the gospel, and develop faith. 
God is doing so much among us and through us. We can't lose sight of our hope or our courage. When we are weary of doing the next courageous thing, we need to get some rest and spend time in the presence of God because we can't sustain ourselves. God will give us the next steps. We simply need to remain connected to him. When was the last time that you sat in God's presence, took time to rest, soaked in God's word? If you can't remember, do it today. If you can remember, keep doing it. Keep spending time in God's presence. It will sustain you as you live out your faith with courage in the world. Our courage needs fortitude, the strength to keep going in times of difficulty and exhaustion. We need to remain connected to Jesus who gives us that strength. Spend some time resting in God this week and let his peace wash over you and give you courage to keep going. Let's pray. God, we trust you. We trust that even when we are feeling tired and weary, you sustain us for the journey. So God, may we practice this week being with you, sitting in your presence covering our lives with your word, that you might speak life into us, that gives us courage for the journey ahead. And we know that life is hard sometimes, that faith is hard sometimes. So God, we come to you looking for rest and renewal that we might be revived, revived and inspired, to be courageous, to share your love with others. And so God, we come before you this morning, not alone, but together as a body, lifting one another up in prayer, God, because we know that when we speak with you, you listen, you speak and you respond. God, we lift up those to you this week that are on our prayer concerns. God, we praise you for the healing of Susie Herzog's leg. God, we know it's been a long journey for her, and we rejoice this morning, God, that you have not left us, that you, God, have been working in Susie's life in her leg, and that you have restored her. God, we give you all the praise. May you continue to be with her as she continues to recover and gain her strength. God, we lift up to you, you, all of those who are suffering, who are struggling. God, we lift those who are in the hospital to you, those who are suffering and struggling at home. God, for those who we don't know that are suffering, we lift them to you this morning. Asking God that your peace and your presence would surround them and that they might never feel alone. God, we lift to you our church. God, help us to continue to seek your ways and your direction, that we might be faithful in following you, individually and together as a body. God, we thank you for life, for the ways that you are still breathing into us for the ways that you lead us. And so we join our voices together as a body in the prayer that Jesus taught his faithful disciples. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against
as we prepare to go from this place, I call us to action this morning. I invite you this week to sit in the presence of the living God, to let God renew your spirit. I also invite you this morning to respond through the giving of your tithes and offerings. And you can do that as you exit this morning. There will be an offering plate in the back of the sanctuary. You can give online through our church website or by sending it in the mail. And I also invite you to consider how can you give of your time, of your resources, of all that God has gifted you to serve others, to serve the church, to serve the community. So I invite you to act this morning as we stand together and join in singing our closing hymn. this day in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit having the fortitude to keep going that others may know that jesus lives go in peace amen amen